Hi, this is Paul Knopfler here at UC Davis. I'm a professor here studying stem cells. I also do stem cell outreach though. So I try to teach people about stem cells and sort of the realities of the stem cell field, research stem cell treatments. So along those lines, today's video is about FDA approved stem cell therapies. So we're gonna kind of go through all this. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you guys. And it's in some ways a lot more complicated than you might think. So I'm hoping to kind of clarify that with you. So here I've got um, my site, The Niche. So I run a website called The Niche that has a blog and a variety of resources that are for educational outreach. And again, today's topic is all about what the FDA has approved related to stem cell therapies. And it gets a little hairy because in some ways what the FDA has approved is actually broader than just stem cell therapies. It's actually cell therapies in general. And um, just some of those have something to do with stem cells and others are actually related to cell and gene therapy. So we'll, we'll talk through it. So just a little history to start us off. Um, the FDA actually uh, didn't formally approve what was really the first stem cell therapy, which is bone marrow transplantation. So the reason bone marrow transplants work to kind of regrow the immune system after chemotherapy is there are stem cells in there, there are blood stem cells that can regrow all the cells in the blood and the immune system. But um, it just sort of became an established method without gaining FDA approval over the decades. But it, it essentially, for all practical purposes, is uh, okay with the FDA. And, and okay in that sense is something that the FDA has viewed as um, safe and effective given the context. And the context are these, most often these deadly blood cancers like certain kinds of lymphoma and leukemia. So that's kind of where this all started. And it's sort of funny that the <clears throat> very first treatment and the one still sort of going on the most commonly bone marrow transplantation types of things were not actually given sort of a formal rubber, rubber stamp of approval. So uh, what is approved um, most commonly in the way of actual stem cells is actually um, cord blood stem cell uh, products for certain applications. And, and we'll talk more about that. <clears throat> and the cord blood products are actually very similar functionally to a bone marrow transplantation kind of approach. So first I thought we could talk a little bit about the kinds of diseases that actually are approved for treatment by the FDA using either stem cells or cell and gene therapy kinds of approaches. So you can see here melanoma, different kinds of blood cancers, like I was talking about, uh, prostate cancer, uh, certain cosmetic uses like facial wrinkles, uh, also receding gums, um, certain kinds of damage to cartilage can be treated with FDA approved cell therapy, uh, and also a retinal disorder, uh, a retinal disorder called Leber congenital uh, amaurosis, and then also SMA or spinal muscular atrophy. So the FDA has approved certain products for treating uh, these conditions. What this does not mean is that any stem cells are okay to be used for these diseases. You have to kind of have lock and key and match a certain kind of product with an exact disease and only certain kinds of patients who have that disease. So for instance, me listing damaged cartilage here doesn't mean that you, you can use any kind of stem cells to treat damaged cartilage and have that be an FDA approved uh, kind of way to go. So uh, the FDA actually has a list, which a lot of us didn't know until recently. There actually is a list on the FDA website that uh, shows you what is approved. And, and it's kind of tricky because there's sort of two ways of thinking about this. There's FDA approved therapies, which means <clears throat> the FDA has formally said, yes, we are okay with this. Uh, it's, it's this exact drug, this cell or gene therapy drug, and this exact medical condition, it's okay. We approve that. Uh, but a lot of what is going on, especially at um, what we sort of call unproven stem cell clinics is not actually FDA approved. Uh, at some of the clinics, what they're doing is actually okay in a sense with the FDA but the FDA hasn't formally approved it. So what this means is that some of these clinics, especially ones using bone marrow stem cell products or probably PRP, which is like this blood derivative platelet rich plasma for orthopedic conditions specifically, that's not sort of running afoul of FDA regulations. The FDA doesn't view that as necessarily egregiously non-compliant. It probably is in many cases compliant with FDA rules. So the FDA is probably not going to do much about it, maybe nothing about those kinds of things. But that doesn't mean the FDA has actually said, 
we're in favor of this. That there's, so that's sort of the difference between FDA approving something and FDA just sort of going along with it and not taking action against it. And so the FDA in recent years, especially has been really concerned about unapproved stem cell therapies. They put out different notices and videos that are out there kind of warning the public that a lot of what is being offered out there is either illegal or scientifically unproven so it's something that we really need to pay attention when the FDA does go sort of the extra mile and formally say, yeah, we approved something. <clears throat> so I've included in here a video about this drug Spinraza that's really exciting for that condition, spinal muscular atrophy. Uh, so check that out if you navigate over to my website because that, that's uh, really interesting. So that's one of the things that they actually have approved. So as I briefly mentioned, it's really interesting that the FDA is sort of now gamishing together cell and gene therapies together sort of under this umbrella of what a lot of us are calling regenerative medicine. So what's actually on their list of approved therapies includes not only cell therapies, which itself can be divided into either stem cell or non-stem cell therapies, but also these gene therapies. My student intern, Nina, has done a great job making this infographic you can see here. Uh, just kind of going through the different phases of an FDA approval uh, process. And you can see you have to go through these uh, different phases, provide data to the FDA, kind of interface with the FDA. And finally, uh, after completing a phase three trial, um, you may get FDA approval. It's a long, complicated, costly process, but it's at present, you know, it's the way to go to really prove that something is safe and effective. So getting uh, sort of to the punchline here, we actually have the list of FDA approved stem cell therapies. And here on this, in this blog post, I've kind of listed um, some of these different therapies. I'm not gonna go through all of them today in the video, um, but you can uh, again, go to the website to check it out if you want. And what you'll see is that many of these therapies that are approved by the FDA are actually very similar to each other. And so many of them are actually cord blood derivatives. So umbilical cord blood, if, if you're not familiar with that, contains a variety of different cells, in, cells, including stem cells, that have a lot of flexibility and can do some really interesting different things. So you'll, you might notice on this list, there's a lot of cord blood listed and a lot of those products from different sponsors uh, are actually quite similar. But then, you know, there's other things here that are not necessarily directly stem cell related. So for example, um, this first one from Juno Renzani is a CAR T cell therapy. So these are sort of designer T cells used to treat uh, different cancers, in this case, uh, lymphoma. Uh, you can see uh, this other product, Gintuit, on the list is actually used for treating receding gums. And then the list kind of goes on to different kinds of products. Again, uh, many of them are for treating uh, different kinds of cancers, especially blood cancers. Uh, there's another product here, Laviv, which is used to treat wrinkles in the face next to the nose. And so the list kind of goes on. This one, Provenge, is of interest to me as a prostate cancer survivor myself. This is a, a therapy for a certain kinds of uh, advanced prostate cancer. So check out this <clears throat> list of FDA-approved therapies. Keep in mind, again, that these are not all stem cell therapies. Some of them use different cells. Some use more like gene therapies. I've also included different references here in this post. You can navigate via this post to the actual FDA list yourself. And, and just kind of looking to the future, what many of us in the stem cell field, you know, I myself included, are hoping is that, you know, in the next five, 10 years, this list is going to get way longer. And we're going to see a lot more FDA approvals of different cell and gene therapies, but especially stem cell therapies for different products that are proven safe and effective and that are really actually a good way to go for patients, not wasting your money, not taking unnecessary risks on something that probably won't work. So that's kind of where I'm gonna leave it today on stem cells and FDA approved cell therapies. 